Hi everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Torge Petersen from the Software PAE Group. In the following, I will show you the new software release plus one guide and service tool uh, 12.1 with the main changes, new features and enhancements. Starting with the guide tool, a couple of enhancements took place. Continuing with the user interface, solving some issues and adding new color contrast. Longer compiling and the performance with large modules has been improved. Adding new LHX information and the Chinese language package has been fully integrated in Guide. Inside the service tool, same as for Guide, the resolution flexibility with configurable display port interface settings has been added. Various advanced page feature enhancements and the user experience modifications and plus one uh, interlink remote which uh, we will have a deeper look in the following. First, let's have a look to the continuation of the UI UX, the user interface and user experience upgrade enhancements to make the tools being modern. In previous version, the default display port interface setting was 100 by default, and this has been changed to be flexible and compatible with the Windows options. The UI UX enhancements includes also updated icons, color and general look. For example, the colored icons in the menu, the project manager and the selector tab as well. The Chinese language support started in guide 12.0 has uh, now been completed in 12.1 and is supported in menus, toolbars, dialogs and component tree. If it is hidden and you want to add this to your toolbar, please click inside the Customize Toolbar button, check the Active Language Toolbar button, and via this, you are able to choose one of the available language, English and Chinese. The RX compiler for the XL controller has been added to guide, so whenever the XL controller will be released soon, it requires at least guide 12.1 or even higher for support. Another enhancement is the improved compilation speed. In previous version, large projects with modules took very long compilation time. Modifying the compile process, this compiling time has been significantly improved. Same for the startup. Switch over to some enhancements, starting with better module navigation and information. Inside the query dialog of a page, the parameter references presents the number of other pages in the same module with the same link ID. This parameter, including other page properties like object, view license and library, are also shown on search queries. In the inspector of the output LHX file, there are new read-only fields, starting with compile time. This is a compilation a timestamp for the LHX file. It will match the timestamp that can be read from the ECU after the LHX file is written to the ECU using the service tool. And it shows the ROM, RAM and non-volatile memory usage and percent from the compilation where this LHX file was produced. Another enhancement regarding better module navigation refers to module viewer and compare SCS files where a new menu has been added under view called reload. When reload is triggered, the current file in module viewer or current files in compare FCS will be reloaded from disk. The F5 keyboard key will also trigger the reload action. The option settings of each has been expanded with a new one called monitor for file changes. If this option is checked, then the module viewer and or compare SCS will check for any changes to the currently open files. As soon as any change is detected, an asterisk is displayed next to the file name of the changed file. This will be in the main module title bar for the module viewer and for compare SDS, it will be in the file name next to each um, cat area. In addition, a new sub uh, option to this new setting called ask me to reload mod uh, modified files has been added. This option is only valid if the above option is enabled. If this option is checked and there are any changes, then a confirmation dialog will be shown to the user asking if the file or the files should be reloaded or not. Inside the compare STS file tool, the display layout has been modified. A new choice between 
vertical page view as today default and horizontal page views for widescreen monitors has been added. When horizontal page views is selected, the pages are shown side by side instead of on top of each other with a divider between them. After showing some enhancements for better module navigation, let's take a look to a feature enhancement inside the code comparison tool. In previous versions, it has only been possible to see one kind of difference at a time. The added functionality in guide 12.1 changes this. The page tree structure is updated to show all applicable differences for pages. The filter menu became multi-select and all applicable differences are displayed in separated tabs. The toolbar button gets that background color of the selected filter. If multiple filters are selected, it gets a mosaic background color. The last enhancement which relates to the module navigation took place in the module viewer. A save as menu is added under the file menu. Using this menu item will allow to save the current changes in the drawing into a new STS file. It is not possible to overwrite an existing file. The last enhancements which took place in guide 12.1 relates to the test tool. For those who don't know much about the test tool, it is used to perform page level tests and helps to understand how the code is executed and how it would handle certain events. If you are more interested how this test tool works, please refer to the YouTube channel and check out the test tool video. So let's jump to the test tool and take a look to the enhancements. When generating test code, the dialog that first shows up contains all pages under the selected node, which makes it sometimes difficult to find the relevant pages to generate test code for. Now instead, all nodes that do not contain any subnode that is marked by the yellow triangle icon that indicates that the DLL for that page must be generated will be in collapse state by default. You can still uncheck all checkboxes, but check all will only check um, checkboxes on pages that have tests associated with them. It is still possible to manually check or uncheck the boxes for individual pages regardless of whether they have tests or not, but this helps you to check all assigned pages easily and fast. The progress dialog when executing tests has been updated. The progress bar shows the actual progress, the name and order columns are filled from the beginning and um, the table test, iterations, time and result are filled in continuously while the tests are running so that you are able to see the total number of um, table tests or iterations and how many of them are finished. Time shows the time used to run and the result shows um, if all tests for the current line were successful or not. The refresh time for those uh, for these execution test values is one second. In previous version, the compilation sequence stopped if one page compilation failed. In 12.1, the compilation sequence will continue with the um, next page, even if the previous page did not compile successfully. If the main compilation fails, then it will, of course, um, stop all further compilations. Also, when compilation and sequence is finished, tests will be run for all successfully generated pages, even if some other pages um, did not compile successfully. The test cases tree shows all test cases with an icon to identify, uh, identify if this test has been run yet successfully with a green OK icon or failed with a red cross icon. You can also um, change between test cases or select a specific one which has run the test to see the result and um, graph. There is no need to use the mouse only. Now it will also be possible to select test cases uh, to, to view simply by navigating with the keyboard arrow keys. Also, um, there will be no more flickering and the result grid will be shown directly. If we take a closer look to the result, some indicator changed. In previous version, out is used to indicate the expected value from the test and measure is used to indicate the actual value when the test has been executed. To simplify understanding and to use more standard naming, all instances of the text out 
in the headers for our test result grid are displayed instead as expected. All instances of the text measure in the headers for test result grid are displayed instead as actual. In addition to the new indication of expected and actual, there has been added a new option to group the test result. Group by type is like it was in previous version, showing all inputs starting from the left, the actual result to the right and um, the expected in the middle. Group by signal name shows the result of the expected and actual values of each signal side by side, which makes it much more convenient to check the differences. The Excel import file format has been updated so that both the old and the new names out, measured and expected and actual will be allowed when importing Excel files. After showing the enhancements in guide, I will switch over to the service tool. As already showed for guide in previous version, the default display port interface setting was 100% by default, and this has been changed to be flexible and compatible with the Windows options in the service tool as well. The two different themes, white and dark, which are selectable since version 12 has been modified so that there is no need anymore to restart service tool after changing them. Beside that, the general look and the icons has been updated to be more sharper, being colored again, and a lot of new icons has been added. On the communication part of the service tool, the plus one interlink remote gateway has been added, which makes it possible to use service tool remotely with Danfoss telematic gateways like the CS500. For the login, while the gateway selection dialog a Danfoss profile is used, after successful login, all accessible devices which are assigned to this account will be listed with the status information online, offline, or busy. You can select the device you want to connect to remote and double click the mouse uh, to establish the communication. Since the telematic devices has not been released, but pretty soon this feature has already been added to version 12.1 to be prepared and ready to use as soon the devices are available. The service tool menu option find replace signal names under design provides some additional settings related to advanced page parameter options. While this settings, you have the possibility to choose between two options, retain global parameter settings and skip. With this new option for find replace signal names, you have the possibility to keep the current global settings like mean max, default values and unit comments for the resulting signal, or you choose the option um, skip to use the existing global settings. All advanced page components has been expanded with the bevel option full. When selected, the component has a one pixel thick border around the whole component. The bevel color is the same as for raised lowered bevels. When updating or saving a new P1D in an older version, a warning is shown that this may result in lost information if the file is saved with this version 12.1. The next similar enhancement in service tool 12.1 is called text style value and is used to remove the border, the, the added field look around the signal parameter value. This setting is available for the following advanced page components, standard lock, bar graph, oscilloscope, gauge, and string parameter. When this setting is enabled, the lock parameter value do not have a border, the background color is the same as the component, and the font is the selected component font. Another feature extension took place in the advanced page withable settings, where the states locking to file and playing lock file are available as well. The last plus one service tool 12.1 enhancement I will show in this video relates to the array list component settings in advanced pages. It is possible to select a text lookup table for an array list component. When selected, matching text entries are shown in the array list table instead of the actual values. To define a new lookup table, you can add multiple conditions related to the actual value and the shown text. In my simple example, I assigned the text green to the actual value range between 0 and 1. In addition, I selected flash, and this is how it looks like. 
If a lookup table is selected, the size of the column and uh, the rows is um, set to fit the widest text lookup table entry. The settings group list settings is available and contains the options show index column and show headers. These settings are saved in the P1D file and checked as default. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel or contact the Plus One Help Desk. Thank you for your attention.